All right, I don't know why I'm finding it so hard to start this intro. Well, yes, I do know why, because I haven't uploaded in eight months. Okay, first and foremost, I'm gonna do the typical YouTuber thing and apologize for the sweat on my face, this ridiculous amount of cords I have next to my bed, and this lighting. Okay, where do I start? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while and I have an explanation. And I also plan on explaining to you guys just a bunch of stuff that's going on in my life. And you guys can let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm literally dying. So I'm 23 years old. I hate that I have to tell you guys this. I feel like most of you should know that have been on my channel or following me for a while. If you look back to my recent video, uh, it was eight months ago and I was having a lot of trouble finding motivation or really anything to film. You know, recording all the time is something that's, it's, it's a challenge because you have to find all these exciting things out in the world that you can show other people. You feel like you're pressured, you know, you have to come up with all these new ideas. And I just feel like I wasn't gonna put stuff out there if it wasn't what I wanted. If I wasn't enjoying it, why would I put it out there, you know, just to have it there. I had a lack of motivation, a big lack of motivation. And I feel like it was showing through my videos and not really uploading as much as I used to a couple years ago. Moving on to my lack of motivation and where it all stems from. Okay, so recently um, I've seen psychologists all through my life. I'm just gonna give you a little background story about me so you can kind of get the gist of where I'm coming from. Psychiatrist and psychologist. So I found someone new around that time, a little after my last video eight months ago, and I basically got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and BPD. And if you don't know what BPD is, it's borderline personality disorder. I've been struggling with bipolar for a long time without even knowing it really um, until I completely threw myself into this new psychologist I have. She's absolutely amazing. She's the best one I've ever had. I was completely honest, open and honest. I told her my stories about my life. I told her my background. I've told her what I'm thinking every time I come in. You know, we just sit down, we just talk for an hour and she just listens and it's it's great. So BPD and bipolar disorder. I got matched up with a new psychiatrist. Oh, it's a long story. I'm just gonna be all over the place. I'm just letting you guys know that right now. Before all this, before the new psychiatrist and psychologist, I had a previous psych psychiatrist where I had for a long time. I explained that I have anxiety disorder, which I do. I was prescribed a bunch of benzos. So first I was on clonopin and I can't even tell you what the milligrams were. I completely forget. And then I was on Ativan, that didn't work. And then I got moved to Xanax, which is something that I really wanted to do. I'm the one who suggested it. And at that time I kind of had an idea that it made you kind of high. And I was sort of getting into the idea that, oh, like I can get this break and I can feel good and finally breathe for once. And uh, I wanted something fast acting that was going to work within my schedule. I was getting a new job at that point and I just, I didn't have the time to go through countless hours of therapy every week. I needed something fast acting. So he prescribed me Xanax. It was just 0.5 milligrams, but right off the bat, I could tell that I really liked it. And with medication, I've always had a history medication and alcohol, I've always had a history of doing too much and doing more than what is prescribed. So even with the clonopin, I was kind of abusing that. But once I got on Xanax is when I really started to feel what I liked, you know. I think it only took about a week until I was already prescribing myself on my own a full on, you know, one milligram pill with, before he did. And I went in, I told him it wasn't working and that my body was getting used to this. After three months of being on 0.5, I 
um, but taking more than the dosage. I noticed my body was getting a little bit used to it. I wanted to up the dose. I felt like it wasn't enough. So he decided to up it to one milligram. And I was on one milligram for a long time, at least prescribed one milligram for a long time. But this is when the abuse really started kicking in. <sighs> if you've watched my video getting drunk for the first time on this channel, I have a video of me for sure getting drunk for the first time. It was legit. I've never been drunk before that. Even then, you know, I was on clonopin, clonazepam, and I was getting drunk for my first time and I was trying to overdo it. Like I was already seeking a feeling of being out of control and not being myself. So, you know, I asked my friend next to me, you know, look up on Google if I took a clonazepam, which is a clonopin with the alcohol that I already drank. And this was almost a full bottle of wine at this point and um i didn't take it but I, as you can see i was already trying to abuse it throughout my 20th to 21st year of life i was drinking wine i'm talking that carlo R cr i i don't remember the wine but i used to drink it was this big and it came in a jug and I used to just drink it, used to buy it from people because I wasn't 21 yet. And I used to stick it in this drawer down here and hide it from my parents. And I used to come in here, lock the door, take my clonopin, like two or three. And then I just like really drink this wine. And it stemmed from a lot of depression and things that I was going through, through my relationship, my past relationship of five years. But I haven't been with her for two years. And you know, while I was with her, I didn't know it, but I was I was being verbally abused. Well, mentally abused, really. Um, towards the end is when, you know, my blindfold kind of started coming off and I was realizing what I deserved or what I thought I deserved. So that ended. When I was kind of in my 21st year, I started, just going out a lot more you know I was 21 and I was all over the place I was out every single night until uh like 10 o'clock in the morning I wouldn't come home till the next day uh, in like the afternoon I was always out it was it was worrying my parents but I was getting high and drunk at the time so I really didn't it didn't affect me or hit me as hard and I I feel terrible for that Anyways, I would spend night and day at the bar. Up the street from me, it's a bar. Um, it's a local bar. It was really uh, lit, as they say. People I went to school with, people that went to school with, people I went to school with, like just people that, that I was familiar with. And I got to know them. And, you know, I just made so many friends and so many people I've met that I don't even remember the names of. I started getting very sexually active. I started giving myself away more than I probably should have, but I was, um, you know, I was fighting with insanity. I was fighting with active addiction and this disease can absolutely tear you apart and break you. And you think, you know, you're, you're okay. Like nothing's going on with you. It's not a big deal. You keep pushing it off. And, and then when you're high, like your whole, mindset just revolves around you not really caring it it's it's a big thing okay and i can't sit here and explain it all to you right now so i was out every night doing that trying new drugs at this point from the middle of 21 years old to 22 i was prescribed xanax i was fully abusing it by then i went on to the one milligrams not being enough uh, eventually he told me to take a milligram and a half but that was like towards the end either way it didn't matter like I was just uh, getting drugs from a psychiatrist that I was just taking to get high okay it didn't matter if it was just a one milligram pill or not I was gonna take more I was up to three pills and then I was up to four pills and then I started buying it on the streets I started getting other people to try and ask around for me to buy it on the streets and I was at at the end, just spending $300 every paycheck, every week on getting Xanax off the street. Now I tried other pills. I've tried like a morphine pill a couple times. I tried a, I tried Dilaudid, I tried Percocet. 
I never really liked any of them. I kind of got into Percocet a little bit because I got my wisdom teeth out. Then I got a root canal and all this stuff that I used as an excuse to try and get high off the stuff. I mean, I loved the feeling. Within three days, I was like, oh, I need more. Like within three days of taking a prescribed Percocet that I was abusing, taking more of, I was already addicted. You know, it's an opioid. It's one of the most leading causes for drug overdose and addiction that and heroin and fentanyl. I mean, while I was doing all this, I was taking over-the-counter drugs to get me high. I was taking coracetin, a cough, cold, and congestion pill. Oh, I was smoking weed. I tried cocaine a lot of times. Usually ended up with like doing cocaine and then having sex. I started getting immensely depressed and that's when I started to see my psychologist that I have now. I was still getting high in active addiction when I started seeing her. Listen, I opened up to this woman. At first I was very attracted to her. God, I hope she doesn't watch this. Anyways, I told her what has happened while I've gotten high, I got raped. I used to drink bottles of cough syrup. I spent like almost $400 one time on promethazine codeine and all the lies and excuses I made. I told my mom that we were all having a party and this was the new thing you drink with a little bit of Sprite and you just drink a little bit and I need her to grab me some big double cups at work, some plastic cups so you could bring home because I'm going to this party. I ended up pouring all that codeine or a lot of it into the Sprite and actually just drinking it at home. I didn't share it. I was not about to share it. One is too many and a thousand never enough. Eventually that was too much money. And the Xanax was getting to be too much money as well. At this point I was battling with being in love with somebody who would never have been in love with me either. It really controlled my whole outlook on life. I got into this even deeper depression. I'm not even going on and explaining all of the things I've been through. There's so much, this is gonna have to be a separate video. So I was seeing my psychologist and I told her how my drug of choice was Xanax, um, how I've taken other things, gotten high other ways. She recommended I go to an NA meeting, Narcotics Anonymous meeting. And I was kind of iffy about it. It took me a couple weeks of seeing her, a couple more appointments that I finally was like, okay, I'll just go to one, you know. I prided myself in trying new things and being experimental and always everything being an experiment and that's what I've struggled with. So I hit up this NA meeting, one close to me, it's only five minutes away from my house. And I walk in and I'm greeted with hugs, like instantly I'm greeted with hellos and what's your name and how much clean time do you have? I had to explain that I was new, that I had no idea about this program. This church actually, my first one meeting I ever went to just eventually became my home group as well and it still is my home group and I love it. I absolutely love everyone there. They're my family. So I walk into this place, I, I bring my mom and Justina of course because they're my comfort zone. You know, I was completely sick walking in and it was a speaker meeting. Usually any other day of the month, every Sunday they have uh, where you break off into groups and you like intimately talk to each other. But this time every last Sunday of the month, and I guess it was the last Sunday of the month, they have a speaker. And wow, he was someone that I really needed to hear. It was like I needed to hear it. It just, it gave me chills and I was crying while I was listening to this man speak. If he had 20 or 30 some years clean, so I listened to this guy talk and after he talked, everybody started to disperse and talk to everybody in the room. And I was like, well, what do I do? Like I went up to the front, but it took my time to breathe. And I went up to the front and got the booklets up front that they have, which you should read and pass them on to help somebody in need. So afterwards I was led to meeting other people, which my psychologist said I need to do. I, she said I need to go in and introduce myself to other people and get numbers. And I introduced myself to a couple of the ladies there. And ladies usually stay with ladies at these meetings, especially in the beginning because you don't want to be distracted. And the men stay with the men. That's if you're heterosexual, but I'm not. I like women. So 
it was hard for me to get my mind set into something that was going to be helpful for me and not something that's going to be like selfish. So I met these two girls. Um, I will not disclose their names. One of them was this girl that I was just taken with. I was like, oh my God, look at all these tattoos she has. We could really vibe. And she's just like so welcoming. And she tells me all about this stuff and she starts writing numbers down and stuff. And she goes, well, here's my friend. And I met this girl. She was very welcoming. She gave me the information I needed, but she just wasn't like out there. And you could tell she was just tired that day or something. I got these girls' numbers and I texted them. The text that I got back was from the girl that she introduced me to, the one I said was not as talkative. We started talking and getting to know each other and I just click with her instantly. You know, she's into fashion, she's into art. She just liked all the things that I liked and I really looked up to her and admired her. At this time she had about two, almost three years clean. We're talking, you know, I write about her in my journal and I wrote about her the day that she became my sponsor. So she actually is my sponsor right now and I couldn't be happier with her. Like, she, I just, I could go on and on and on about this girl. Like, I've never met someone so understanding that makes me feel so comfortable. You know, she used to take me to meetings. She's the one that introduced me to everything. She's the one that got me to feel out the rooms. I've called her crying. I've called her breaking down. I remember this one time I called her and I was just crying and I felt like shit. My new psychiatrist has prescribed me a lot of medication to try and get my bipolar disorder under control. And at the time I was taking Neurotin and like everybody in the meetings that's an addict has taken Neurotin um, or abused Neurotin and that's what I heard. So I opened up the capsule, put it on my dresser, proceeded to crush it up and you know, I slipped. So I called her and I was freaking out. I th think we, that was the day we talked for almost two hours over the phone and she just helped me so much. And by the time I was off the phone with her, I wasn't crying anymore. I was ready to go about my day. I was ready to get back into it. I wasn't gonna do this anymore. I've relapsed two times since then. I'm now celebrating, I believe I have 35 days clean almost 40. I'll show you this is your just for today key tag. This is your 24 hours that you go in and get. This is 30 days that I just recently picked up. Let's see if you could see it more. 60 days and this is 90 days. I've gotten up to 90 days. I've actually gotten up to about 120 days and then I relapsed. So that's that. I started to also try and go to AA meetings as well. I met this wonderful woman there. Her name was something I will not say. So she actually bought me this Alcoholics Anonymous book. Um, I love the smell of books. She took me in the first day I was there. You know, this meeting is big. It's a speaker meeting with like a hundred people that go to it or close to. I eventually went on to getting this. I took the cover off. It's blue, the cover's blue. They call it the blue book, but this is the NA um, Bible. This is my journal in which I put all my step work in. When you're done with a step, you go and review it with your sponsor and then you can go on to your next step or whatever. But I've been in the program a good amount of time where I have some tools to use and some you know, ways of thinking to stop myself and control my behavior somewhat so I don't use again or don't use as quickly as I have before. Um, don't rely all my emotions on using and that thinking that that is the only way out um, to make me feel better, but otherwise just talking about it, getting to a meeting, um, sharing, calling my sponsor. So, hello, I'm Sarah and I'm an addict. That is just one of the reasons 
why I haven't uploaded in a while. I was dealing with all of that. I've been dealing with trying to get motivation for myself in and out of jobs. I've been trying to control my anxiety, my bipolar, all, all these pills I've been on. I just have been feeling so many mixed emotions so frequently throughout the day, weeks, months, that I just couldn't get myself or my head right to make a video and spend the time to edit and talk, you know, about whatever, or even think of something to upload. You know, I've dealt with a lot this past year. Withdrawing from drugs is bad. My psychiatrist, the one before this one, actually cut me off cold turkey from Xanax, um, prescribed me no more. I wasn't gonna go buy off the streets because I got let go from my job and I didn't have the money to do that. Because I didn't wanna detox, I didn't wanna go to a hospital, I didn't wanna go to rehab. I just was in complete denial about it all. I did it all by myself at home and I knew nothing about what I was gonna go through. So once I looked it up, I started to absolutely just panic. Learning then, if you stop cold turkey off of Xanax, you can actually die, you can seize out. It's not ideal for you to go through withdrawals at home by yourself. It was like a full week of completely just going through something that felt like 10 times worse than the flu, throwing up hot and cold. My body was stiff. I had an immense amount of anxiety that I couldn't control. My head wasn't right. I couldn't move, my body ached. I was constantly on the phone with the medical emergency people from the psychiatrist that I had telling them about my symptoms, calling them, asking them all these things. Uh, I had to have my parents sleep with me. I had to have them check on me. I just couldn't function for a good month after that. It took a week for the symptoms to kind of let up, but it took me a while to recover. That's a little bit of my story. The experiences I had that led up to it, that can be a different time. I'm gonna tell you that through active addiction, I don't really remember a lot of things. And it's sad because I lost two, three years of my life. Faces, people, memories, I don't remember it. That's kind of where I'm at right now is I'm trying to better myself. And I've been thinking about you guys a lot and I've been thinking about uploading and I really have wanted to post something to tell you guys where I'm at. And I wanna start this up again and I wanna start it up in more of a professional way, as good as I can get at the moment. Um, just bear with me because, you know, I'm still going through a lot and trying to get my head together. And I wanna keep going on from there. And, you know, addiction is something, you can't explain a disease unless you have it or unless you go through it. You know, I suggest going to a meeting, even if you are an ally or have someone in your family who has been an addict, you should go and you should learn. It's something that I feel like everyone needs to do. Whether you're ready or not, that's fine. But eventually I feel like you go there and you feel like you're understood for the first time in your life. You go there and you meet like-minded people and you could go in there and tell them you killed somebody and they'd be like, okay. You know, they'd sit there and listen, and let you cry about it. The things we talk about, the people you meet, they have events, they have food for thought. You'll get addicted to NA coffee instead of drugs. You'll pick up key tags instead of drugs. With all of that being said, you guys are free to ask me whatever questions you want down in the comments. We'll either answer them in the comments or answer them in the next video. Um, you should know my social medias. If you don't, they will be below. So that's what I wanted to cover. And I'm glad I did. And I'm glad I got to get it off my chest. Like, whew. so I will be looking forward to talking more with you guys and filling you in about my life and uh, just showing you more around my life and we'll see where it takes us. So I'm gonna end it off here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. So as I always used to say, I hope you guys are having a nice morning, afternoon, day, evening, and night, wherever you are in this wonderful world that I'm learning about and this journey that I'm taking on. And I'll see you guys till next time. And I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.